Hi again all, this is Dana. In this video I'm going to be teaching you how to use a mat cutter in order to do some framing. I've noticed recently in a bunch of the groups that I belong to on Facebook uh, for cross stitch and such that people are talking about spending a lot of money getting their um, their pieces framed once they're done. And to me I just don't understand that because I've always uh, done my own framing. I learned how to do it at art school. So I'm going to be teaching people how to cut uh, the mats on the framing, which tends to be the part that scares people the most. Uh, and that way you can save yourself a lot of money doing your own framing. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be framing these two little photos here of my lovely little fuzzball Coco. Uh, I was going to be framing, I'll show you here, this one. It's a painting that I did from a friend's photograph and I overpainted it and I was going to be framing this today but um, the problem was it's extraordinarily windy outside and there was no way I could bring the mat board home the full-size sheet and the art store I have near me only sells full-size sheets uh, so what I did is I actually bought this fr pre-cut frame here it's an 11 by 14 inch one which is the size I was going to cut down to anyway uh, so I bought this one for $3.99 so this is another option too if you have a standard size uh, piece or one that would fit into a standard size um, pre-cut frame. These are really cheap and this will save you a lot of time if you're not sure that you want to try cutting your own mats. But anyway, for this project I will be using these two photographs and showing you how to actually cut this mat board. So this board is left over from another project. It's white on the back so you can see the edge here. Is white. All right, I'm just gonna zoom in there, so you can see that's a white edge. This piece here is an extra, another extra piece. What I've actually done is I've scored the back here, and that's gonna bend slightly. And I'm actually gonna use that to be a little kickstand. Basically, sorry, I can't. I'll show it to you later. But basically, I'm gonna mount that to the back of of this main piece here, and that will provide a little stand for it. So we'll put that over there for now. So what I've done, I'm going to lay them out roughly like that. What I've done before I started filming is I actually measured out roughly where I wanted these uh, photographs to sit. What I decided is I'm going to have them sitting a little farther apart like that. And I'm going to either write or print something off the internet or whatnot. A little motto or something here, or maybe Coco's name. Something I'm not sure what I'm going to put in the middle here, but I am going to put something there. I haven't decided what yet. So what I did is I measured the photographs. The photos are four by six inches. And then I measured roughly where I wanted to make the cuts. So this is my uh, little layout diagram here. You can see the cut that I wanted to do here is going to be, so this upper cut is going to come down to there roughly. It's going to be one and a quarter inches deep from the edge and it's obviously going to overlap the photo a little bit, otherwise the photo will just fall straight through the hole. One and a quarter inch this way, one and a quarter inch this way for this edge of the photograph here. And down the bottom it's going to be a little bit deeper. At the bottom it'll be one and a half inches up. It just tends to look better to the eye if the bottom part is a little bit deeper. And then the inside edge is going to be five inches from the edge here. And it'll be the exact same in reverse for this piece here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this piece over and I'm going to start laying out these guidelines. So I'm going to put a guideline one and a quarter inches here all the way across, one and a half inch across, a one and a quarter down here, one and a half here, and then I'll do my side lines. So I'm going to stop the camera for a moment, lay out my guidelines for where the cuts are actually going to be going. And then I will turn the camera back on and I will show you how to actually use the mat cutter. See you in a minute. Alright, I'm back. So as you can see, I've drawn my lines on here. So we have our one and a quarter inches here, one and a half inches here, and five inches uh, from this inner edge of the photos to the outer edge here. And another one and a quarter inches here. So one way to double check and make sure that your windows are not going to be too big for your uh, your document, your cross stitch, whatever it is you're framing, uh, you can double check here. So you can see if I overlay this up bit, if I overlay this, you can see there is going to be a little bit of overlap. 
can see here, there's a little bit of overlap here and here, and also vertically, if I center the picture, there's a little overlap here and here. If the window is too big, obviously this is an extreme example, but literally your photograph or your piece will just fall right through the hole. So yeah, you don't want that. So what I'm going to be doing is I will show you how to use the mat cutter. So this is the box that mine came in. Sorry, I'm actually got the camera mounted in a really strange way, so that's why sometimes things aren't centered. Um, so that's the box that came in. I've literally had this one for about 20 years. I believe I bought this in New Zealand. And here's the actual cutter here. It's called Maphead. So you can see here it's actually got this little uh, rail along here. And it's what it's meant to do is it's actually meant to clip onto a, a special ruler. So in theory, you'd clip it onto your ruler like this. It's got a little track right here that would clip onto the special ruler and it would slide along that. And then there's your cutting line right there. I decided not to buy the ruler originally. Um, I believe this was about $30 or so when I bought it and the ruler was about an extra 40. I was an art student at the time, so I was like, I can't afford that. So I just bought the cutter. And I've actually learned how to use it with a normal steel ruler. You can use any ruler. Uh, I prefer steel because then if you slip, this knife isn't going to cut into your ruler and create sort of jagged edges along the edge of your ruler, which sucks because then it makes it much harder to run it up against. You'll also need a ruler that's got a little bit of thickness to it so that this can butt up against it and not slip over top of the edge. But pretty much anything would work um, as long as you can get a consistent line with it, as long as the ruler is long enough to get a nice straight go at it. And one thing I'll also point out too before I start cutting is you can see on the piece I've actually marked about a quarter of an inch or about a half a centimeter beyond the edge of each line. The reason for that is is because the cutter is on a 45 degree angle so when you cut You'll see this more clearly when I actually start doing the demonstration, but when I cut, you actually have to extend beyond the line a little bit when I'm cutting, because otherwise, on the other side, the corners of the window won't, sorry, the cor when I'm cutting, the corners of the window wouldn't meet up if I was cutting and I didn't extend beyond these lines here. I'm actually going to mark these little bits here before I start cutting. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this line here. I'm really hoping that you'll be able to see this with the angle of the camera. So this I've learned to do with this ruler just a lot of trial and error. I'm going to angle it this way so you can see what's going on. Get the photos out of the way for now. Alright. And uh, what I'm actually working on here is, this is a self-healing cutting mat. This is great. I've had this forever. It was a very, very good investment. All right, so let's see if you can see that there with the camera. I'm going to try and move it in a little bit. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can quite see. i to angle it this way a little bit. So this takes a little bit of practice, but basically, if you're pushing your blade down, you want to figure out where your line is going to be so that your the tip of your blade will actually run along your drawn line. So for me, that's leaving maybe a millimeter's gap between this part of the piece here and the actual line I'm going to be cutting. So obviously you're going to get your ruler completely lined up, make sure it's dead straight. So I'm going to be starting to cut, let's get this lined up a bit more, I'm going to be starting to cut at this extended line here. So this is actually the corner of the window right here, but I'm cutting here, starting there because of that trick I told you about where otherwise the windows won't actually get cut out properly. Make sure that's, yeah, so it takes a little bit of practice and I really, really recommend if you're new to this and you don't, especially if you don't have the ruler that it clips onto and you do have to do a little bit of adjusting, um, I really recommend getting a piece of mat board. You can buy this stuff um, between like eight and fifteen dollars depending on the the texture, the quality of it, the thickness. Um, 
from any art store. They're huge sheets, so I mean you can get a lot of frames out of one sheet. Or you can get quarter sheets and half sheets, I believe, depending on, on your art store. Alright, so I'm going to be trying this. I'm just going to try and move this a little bit more centered, see if that helps see a bit better. Alright, so this is going to be a bit odd for me because I'm doing this left-handed, just so for the camera. So obviously you're going to be holding your ruler down really firmly. You don't want your ruler to skid. You want to run your cutter along the edge very carefully. Make sure it's all going to line up perfectly. You don't want it to be slightly veering off because then your cut's going to be a little off. Alright, so I'm going to start cutting now. And what I do is I actually I tend not to do one cut, I do a couple of gentle cuts, but I'm very careful to make sure I go back into the same line every time. So basically you just push down here on your blade, and you do a really gentle cut. Again, keeping a lot of pressure on your ruler. And then you're going to go past the edge of your window so the tip of your blade is hitting that quarter inch mark beyond the edge of your line. Alright, and go back in. It should slot right back into the same channel. If you have a really sharp blade, you can do this with one swipe. But I find because I don't have the ruler, and because you're having to put a bit of pressure on it, for me it's actually a little bit easier doing it in a few swipes. So that way it doesn't require quite as much pressure when you're holding your ruler down and when you're using your knife. You should feel a bit of a change of texture when you start cutting through the other side. I'm just going to do one more. I believe that's probably it, but I'm just going to do one more to be safe. Yeah, it's really, really smooth now, so that's when I can tell it's cut all the way through. So I'm going to show you from this side. So you can see I've cut to this line here. Here's the inside of the window, but I've cut to here. I started beyond there, and there's the line there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of these lines, cut them, and I will show you how it comes out, because it's pretty much exactly the same thing to cut all these other lines as you start a quarter inch beyond, Sorry, can't see. Sorry, you start a quarter inch beyond. This I haven't marked yet, but go to here. Same as these lines here. And then you cut your windows out. One thing to do, double check, obviously. Some people would prefer to put a big X in the middle of the panels that they are actually cutting out because if you actually look at this, you can see I've actually got three panels. This piece is actually staying whole. It was just easier for me to draw one straight line across to make sure they're both the same height. So if you do get easily confused, it's best to actually mark which panels are the ones that are going to be popped out, because otherwise you might end up cutting out a window that you didn't intend to. Alright, so I'm going to be turning the camera off, and I'll cut, make the rest of the cuts for this, and then I will flip it over and you can see how it comes out. Alright, I'm back. So one thing I just noticed that I did incorrectly when I was showing you earlier is that the cutter actually has to be facing the, the angle of the blade. It actually has to be facing away from the center of, of your window. I was uh, showing it to you incorrectly with the blade facing uh, in towards the window, like, like this. Um, but what that will actually do is make the cut the wrong way so that the window is actually, like you can see here on this pre-cut piece, you can see the narrower part is on the inside edge and then the wider part is the outside edge. So you have to just make sure that when you are cutting to make sure that the blade is facing the outer edge of your piece. So it's facing away from the center of your piece and that way your angles are always going to be correct. I actually did it incorrectly on a couple of them because I haven't cut a frame in a while. Uh, but that's okay because basically all you need to do is just move your ruler just slightly out and then you can recut the line going the right direction and then it, it works just fine. So here you go. So here's the edges. So you can see this is one that I cut incorrectly and I cut it correctly later. So you can see here there's a few little bits and pieces that are not quite cleanly cut. 
They're attached here. There's a little bit attached here. That's the, the little bit that I got caught up with when I switched directions. So what I always do is I get one of these craft knives, handy dandy craft knife, and I just really, really carefully figure out you just insert the knife and very, very gently just cut that little bit away. Might have to do it on both sides. Make a little cut and it will just pop out. You don't want to really tear it away because then it could create like a little bit of a, a rough bit there on the edge. And same up here on this edge here. So you can see by cutting a little bit beyond the end of the line, there's the odd one where there's a slight tiny bit of an extended line, but you can just push that down and it actually tends to almost reheal itself. It's not noticeable really at all. So yeah, just one more time I'll show you. I'll show you the right way this time. So for example, let's put that back in there so you can get the idea. So I've got my ruler here. So yeah, so my blade will be facing away from this, here's the center, so my blade will be facing away from the center, and my cut lines, the tip of the blade will be going in at this extended half quarter inch mark here, running along the ruler, and then when the blade is actually in the cutting, or sorry, in the mat board, because it's on an angle, you're going to be stopping the blade where the back edge of the blade gets to that cross section here where the you get, get your one quarter inch mark past here. So it's like this part of the blade here will be there. So your tip is roughly right at the corner because of that 45 degree angle. So that's why you extend because the blade's at a 45 degree angle. If you didn't extend your line here, your inner line is actually going to be a little bit short. But again, that's one thing that you can experiment with when you get some mat board and just start cutting it. I mean, it's, you know, as long as you keep the blade away from your hand, you're not going to hurt yourself. It's pretty safe. I mean, unless you literally stuck your finger under, the, under there, this pretty impossible to hurt yourself with. It's actually got um, spare blades inside this little capsule here. You kind of spin it off and it's got spare blades, but I don't even think I've ever had to replace that blade and I've had it a good 20 years and I've done a lot of framing with this thing. I used to do a lot of prints. So that's how you cut the windows out. And obviously the next stage is going to be getting your images ready. So the art shop I went to didn't actually have any photo corners, which is fine. I mean, you can do this without photo corners. Get it back there. So you decide, you know, obviously where you want each one. So if you've got photo corners, that's really good. Another little trick that I learned is if you get some scotch tape, some kind of tape or double-sided tape works too. What you can do is do things like, that's right, I keep forgetting the camera's not where I'm normally seeing things. Okay, so you got your, this is actually going to be like a little impromptu photo, photo corner here. So once you get your photo kind of lined up how you want it, at least so that it's not going to fall through the window, is you can just sit, sort of sandwich, sandwich the corners like that, and just stick it down. You might have to trim away a bit of the tape if it's overlapping the edge of your frame or whatnot. So we do that on all four corners. You get your little pictures and you just stick them down like that. Then that will actually help sort of keep this from moving too much. 
Uh, you can also like use tape or something like that to tack it to the edges here. I don't recommend that for artwork just because, or needlework, anything that might uh, yellow over time because usually just general scotch tape isn't acid free so eventually that will start to turn yellow but we're talking like decades so if it's something that um, you know you're not really that concerned about or uh, yeah then it doesn't really matter but you can also just anchor it using um, just normal tape so there's lots of ways to anchor it and then what I'm going to be doing I'll just uh, turn the camera off finish doing the corners the photo corners and I will show you what uh, I usually do if I'm not putting uh, this directly into a frame. There's a way that you can kind of make it self-contained so it can be kind of used on its own without an actual picture frame with glass and whatnot. So I'll just finish doing the photo corners and I'll be back in a moment. All right, I'm back. So as you can see, I've finished up the photo corners. So uh, one of the things that I should say is the reason that I'm covering the paper with the tape and not just using tape directly is for that exact reason that is, this will help keep it protected against uh, potential yellowing in the future. That way the tape's not actually directly touching the photograph. But like I said, if it doesn't, it's not something that's overly valuable, uh, then it's fine. So, all right, so what I'm going to do is, so you can see I've got my beautiful little boy's pictures right there. And what I'm going to do is, what I have here is just a simple piece of uh, paper, and it was uh, 11 by 17, I just got it from the photocopy shop. Uh, and what I did is I actually just put uh, some double-sided tape along it and pulled the edges up. So that's actually going to be the backing for this. So what I'm going to do is, let me just so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to put the edges down. So this will help keep everything in place as well. We'll almost make a little sandwich. All right. We'll press. And there we go. A little bit dusty from all the bits of cardboard I cut. So there you go. So that's the back. So now it's nice and sealed and protected. And what I did, this is that uh, extra piece of card I told you about earlier that I'd scored, probably about halfway through. I put a piece of double-sided tape on there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bend that slightly. This is going to act as my little kickstand for the picture. So in this way too, I mean, you don't have to worry about actually even buying frames. I mean, some people prefer not to have things under glass directly and you know framing can be expensive I tend to just go and buy frames that are on sale um, and then get a frame that's uh, obviously bigger than your project and then I can custom cut the mat to fit that frame and then the inner window will be the size of the project so that way you can really make use of sales and finding things on secondhand stores, things like that. You don't have to buy something that's specific for that size of project. As long as the frame itself is big enough to accommodate it, you can custom make the mat to fit that. So what I'm going to do is flip that over, take the tape off here, and I'm going to line it up roughly there, I guess. That's nice and stuck. Make sure it's nice and stuck down. And there you go. I'll just take the camera out of the clamps. There you go. That's my beautiful little project. So that's a really quite a simple project to do. Once you get the hang of uh, using the actual mat cutter, it's actually really efficient as far as you can custom make anything to any size that you like. Like literally these pieces of uh, mat board were leftovers from another project. They were actually the uh, outer windows, or sorry, the inner windows that popped out. So even the, sorry for keep moving the camera, even the little windows that came out of here, I could use these for really little projects if I really wanted to. 
Sorry, I'm trying to adjust the focus. So yeah, so you don't. The, the mat board is kind of neat in that you don't really have to throw out the windows once you cut them out, because then you can use them to make uh, mats for smaller projects. So there you go. That's how to do any mat cutting. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment below, and I will do my best to answer them for you. Thanks very much. Talk to you later.